Hello and welcome to another Miniature Realms video and welcome to another painting tutorial. So um, this one is back to the epic um, ACW by Warlord Games. So these are 13.5mm um, scale um, to the eye. So somewhere between your sort of 10 and 15 mil if you haven't come across them before. There's lots and lots of videos on the channel about this. The majority of videos are about this game. Um, so if you're new to this, go and check those out as well. Um, it's been requested a few times that I did a painting tutorial for the artillery. Um, so um, I thought I'd finally get around to doing it. I'm going to try and make this quite a short one. Um, I've already completed a few um, painting tutorials for this scale. The first one was the um, Confederate infantry. I'm going to be painting these as Confederate infantry and some of the stages I'm going to miss out at the beginning. So it's worth going and watching that video. I'm going to pop a link here on the screen now for you. Um, so the, the, essentially what I do is prime black and then do a zenithal highlight using grey um, and then white and then some white dry brushing as well. And I'm painting these in effectively in contrast glazes over the top. The model one looks slightly different. Um, I've done some minor sort of head swaps and, and kit bash conversions on some of the plastics. So if you're thinking, well, that looks a little bit different. There's a different head on one guy than another. Um, that's all it is. I lose track of which ones I've done conversions on after I've primed them, but I've just picked this one up. So as I said, I'll try and make it relatively short. The actual men themselves will be using the same process that I do on the inventory tutorial. I will probably still add that anyway, because other than that, it's just the gum. So let's get started. Um, so like I said, primed zenithal beforehand, and that's quite important. So please do go and check that other video out if you're not sure what that is. Um, and then I'm going to start with um, contrast plague bearer flesh. Now this I'm using on the gun, and I copied this. I believe it was from the Warlord, um, sorry, the War Games Illustrated painting guide when they gave away the free sprue. I'm pretty sure that was the colour they recommended in there. Um, I paint that way a lot anyway i say that way i paint in glazes using contrast um over pre-shaded quite a lot not usually for whole miniatures usually just for areas but with this scale i'm pretty much doing the entire miniature in in, in contrast so all i'm doing is making sure that there's a, enough color to pull slightly but not on the flat surfaces um, I want it to pull a little bit. The thinner you make it, the more just like a glaze it is. This is somewhere in between glazing and washing. The pre-shade or pre-highlight of the white and the grey over the black is already giving you some natural shadow. So I'm relying on that to give me some depth rather than just a flat colour. Because um, I won't really be going back and doing much highlighting, if any highlighting, over that. So as you can see, that was just fairly quick, green all over, um, and I need to let that to dry now. But I can carry on with other bits while it's while it's drying. Um, so I'm going to continue to use contrast paints to pick out little parts of the rest of the model. So I'm going to give a couple of the guys blue trousers using the contrast Talisar blue. This is in the previous uh, painting tutorials you'll have seen already if you've watched those. So this none of the none of this will be new in terms of if you've if you've seen the the uh, Confederate uh, infantry painting tutorial at all. Something you may not have seen me doing when I sped the video up there was uh, removing paint while it was still wet, which is aiding that uh, that highlighting that you get from the pre-highlight stroke pre-shade. I'll just show you how I was doing that there. So cleaning my brush off and with a wet brush, it's going back over the contrast before it fully dries. And then you can just, just hopefully you can see that in the camera that you're just making that wear away a little bit like there's a natural highlight there.
So I'm going to give one of the guys put a button up style trousers, so to speak, and I'm going to use um, Contrast Agarash Dunes for that. And just the same way as I did with the Talisar Blue. Paint it in, keep an eye on how thick it's looking. This is a slightly less strong pigment in this, so it may not need anything. If anything, you need to reinforce it in the shadow areas by doing another layer. And that just shows that there's not really a one size fits all with any paint really, but definitely not with contrast. They're still paints. They still work with ratio of pigment to medium and water. And uh, some pigments are just stronger than others. So you have to uh, water them down or do multiple coats and act accordingly with them. And they won't all work exactly the same way. Right, time to pick out a, uh, a floppy hat or two. So I'm going to gorg one to fur for, for one at least, maybe more. We'll see how it looks when I start putting them on there. So we'll, we'll go with this one. This one again is a stronger pigment, but it does seem to go really nicely. Nasdrag Yellow, it's going to go over another one. I just thought to put Gorgorunt on it and I didn't want it to be the same orange as the other hat, so I'm just going to mix it up a little bit. Now some Blood Angels Red and the contrast again. Um, the artillery had uh, sort of red facings and, and hats and things there. So I'm just going to make the cap on this guy red and then go in and do a couple of the uh, jacket cuffs and things So slowly chipping away at it. Now we have another contrast paint and contrast black Templar. There's a few bits I'm going to pick out. I'm going to pick out their um, belts and uh, and straps and things and the webbing and uh, this guy's hat and their boots, I think, as well. So a couple of little things to pick out here. Starting to get through it now. Um, I'm going to use some uh, grey sear base paint from Citadel. I've used it just because it's something I have easy to sort of hang around, but any light grey will do. Um, this isn't the paint that, that I used um, airbrushing the Zenith for, but I just use it as a bit of a way of, of, of tidying up um, any overspill, adding any highlights on the grey I feel I need, but also picking out any areas that are too dark for the later stages of contra a contrast, like the faces and things like that. So, um, so you can see on this one here that his face is very dark because when I've airbrushed down, his hat's been in the way. Um, and when I play the, apply the dark oath flesh, which we're going to do shortly, um, I want the flesh to be able to, to uh, show up. And if the figure is too dark, um, the contrast won't do the job that I've, I've sort of been describing. Okay, so I've just done that little tidy up. I'm lighting the faces a little bit where needed. Um, coming back in with the colours again now. So contrast Saigor Brown. I'm assuming these were wooden. Maybe 
maybe they weren't, maybe they were metal. Someone let me know in the comments. Next stage is the flesh. So contrast darko flesh over each flesh area and may come back and do a quick highlight afterwards. Time for hair and beards. You can use any mixtures of the browns and things you wanted. And um, they've been using for the rest of it if you want to. Um, if you look at my, uh, as I already mentioned the previous um, painting tutorial for the infantry, I'm, you know, lots of different colors, but I'm gonna use some uh, wild wood, um, at least on one of them. for some uh, Nasdrag yellow on another. Now uh, we're on to the little bit of metallics that are on here. So the, the wheels uh, and obviously the barrel of the gun. Um, I'm using black metal from Scale 75 and Viking gold from Scale 75. Now the Viking gold I'm using um, as the brass type color. They do do coppers and brass range as well, which I've got, but I just quite like this color. Um, I'm mixing it up a little bit on some of the guns I do, using slightly different tones of metallics, just to give them a bit of variety, different ages, different batteries looking after things in a different way. It all helps with the, the non-uniform um, feel of the, of the Confederate Army. So it's almost a, co a copper colour anyway. And they do really nice full sets. And there's like, there's eight golds, I think, in the, in the gold and uh, the gold metallic paint set. And uh, you wouldn't necessarily describe them all as, as, as gold if you you weren't told they were gold, if that makes sense. So I think this one works very well. Now the other bits on the, the uh, gun itself, so the edge of the wheel rims, um, and some other unnamed bits. I haven't got a clue what they're, what they're called, but there's lots of other sort of metallic bits and nuts and bolts and things. So I'll just pick those out in the scale 75 black metal. So when the metallics, so when the metallics are down, it's uh, non oil over the silver parts and agrax over the, the the barrel itself. Right, those so the, the metals and the washes have had a little bit of time to dry. Um, I'm going to come back in and just re-highlight them a little bit so they don't look quite so uh, so dulled out and um, really simple so to for the metal color the clear metal i'm going to come back in with the same base layer and just tidy it up slightly and then add a little highlight with game air silver working little hash marks around rather than just completely blocking out again and focusing on the top layers more. So that's the silver done. Just a bit of highlighting where the light would catch most. Some little scratch type marks and things just to kind of give it a more three dimensional look. And then so 
I've mentioned with the with the gun barrel back in with the same gold as before so back in with the, that scale 75 Viking gold just in the center just picking out the highlights so it's the same color as before but the wash has obviously gone over the top the Agrax wash so I'm just going to go in not go right to the edges and just freshen it up slightly I'm using the Necro Gold from Scale 75. That's a bit of a highlight, really. I, as I said before, I know it's supposed to be brass. These are, this Necro Gold is quite a desaturated gold. Um, that's what I think it will do the effect nicely in these paints just work nicer than some of the bronzes and copper from the same range. There we go, just a little highlight on the top. While I'm waiting for the metallics just to, to dry before I can put the final touches to it, I'm just going to use a little bit of Noctura Fairy Flesh and I'm, I'm going in and I'm just giving the slightest of highlights in certain spaces on the flesh. Really, really tiny, really subtle, not much at all, but you're just helping to make them pop and stand out a little bit. So really close now before we go on to basing. So back to the neck of gold for the belt buckles. And it's little touches like that that just start to make it look less messy. You have to remember this is um, smaller than 15 mil scale and very much a tabletop paint job here. You could spend an awful lot longer, but I don't know about you if you were playing this game, but I have absolutely thousands of these little things. So it has to be a, a way of getting the armies on the table relatively quickly. Um, Next thing I'm going to do is add a tiny bit of verdigris to the, the gold on the barrel. Um, I don't want to add much, but it's uh, a nice little effect. But definitely less is more. And there we go, and that was all I was adding, just a tiny, tiny little touch. Right then, so we're pretty much ready for basing. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I use um, Scale 75 Petroleum Grey a lot, and it's a brownie grey, and uh, I like to use it on bases a lot. Um, it's pretty much my go-to base layer before I do anything else. So all I'm gonna do first, really, really simply, is just go in and give the whole base, including the little raised sections where the miniatures are stuck on a coat of this. Okay, so that's dry, all very, very nearly dry now. And then the next stage is this. So this is earth texture, um, dark earth from Vallejo. And I use this loads and loads and loads as well. I think I've said on previous uh, painting tutorials, on vlogs and things, this stuff's very much like the GW texture stuff, the stir and mud, but it's a lot cheaper and you got a lot more in the pot as well so um, all around pretty good. Now I don't want to put too much on, use older brushes to do it and then kind of stipple it on. One thing that is important with these bases with these little raised sections that the miniatures actually come on is that I blend it down a little bit and I use this to do it. Yeah. 
So when your earth texture is dry, a quick coat of the good old Agrax Earthshade. Now, wash over texture always looks horrible. Um, so what I like to do is add texture in a different way. And I always use pigments on my bases, but I just brush them on dry for this application anyway. Um, you can't really fully fix a pigment. You can buy a pigment fixer, um, but it will, um, it, will, it, won't, it will change the color of it. It will change the way it looks completely, um, which you know, I want this to sort of cover the whole base and, and make the earth look sort of like a dryish mud. Um, and if I put a fix in on it, it kind of, it, it, it takes, you have to flat, mess around with it a little bit more. So, and, and as it will sit mostly in the sort of grain of the base, I'm not too worried. I'll blow the excess off and unless you're touching it with your fingers, you don't really get it on your hands or anything. So I, I do this a lot with my bases. And I just think it makes them look more realistic. So brushing it in, I'll blow the excess off in a moment. And there we are. I think it just takes away the effect of the, the wash a little bit but it does give you sort of three tones. Um, I'm gonna add another layer in now. This stuff is Vallejo Thick Mud. Um, this is less of a thick kind of full texture basing and more of an effect. So if you try to paint it over a whole base without anything else there, it doesn't cover very well, not like the, the um, earth texture does, but it does really good sort of mud splats. And I know I've done just done very dry earth and now I'm putting a wet mud on there, um, but the overall effect works. breaks up the texture a little bit. These miniatures are so basically painted that uh, using a few nice diorama style effects on the bases um, really makes them stand out and look at that a little bit more special. Okay. So there's lots of that on the base now. That will take a few minutes to dry, but it doesn't matter as uh, next up is tufts. So I'm using two sets of tufts on all my American Civil War epic scale. Um, two millimeter tufts from War Paint figures. This is the winter. Sorry, we're quite well zoomed in. Didn't want to unzoom and, and, and uh, lose the place I am with, my, with the filming for the painting. And the other is two millimeter dead grass. Um, so what I'm gonna do with those is uh, apply them straight out of the packet. They're, they're very good quality tufts, these. Um, straight onto the bases. Some I will cut in half to... I just put the straight edge along the edge of the base. And there we are, finished. Um, so very much tabletop standard, but you know, it's got to be, I've got um, 15 of these guns. No, it's 15 a side actually, I think. No, 30, if we're, I'm doing both sides, I'm doing Confederate and Union. So 30 of these to paint, I think in total, and thousands and thousands of the inventory. So I needed to find a system that was quick. Um, I think without, you cut drawing times out, cut filming out, and I could probably paint a gun like this in about half an hour. Um, so yeah, it's quite an easy way of, of getting quite through. The, the inventory seemed to take a little bit longer because they're a little bit more fiddly. Yes, it would have been easy to paint in its three component sides, but because, because of some of the conversions I've done on them, that's not quite as easy. And also it's not that difficult to get your brush in there and get there. And I like to paint things um, assembled where I can sometimes you can mess up a paint job gluing something together afterwards um, sometimes you miss the shadowing or something on something if you're painting it in a way that it's it's not fully together as well so i do prefer to um, paint them in one go if i can i'll put a couple of stills up of this on the screen as well um, so i don't know how well this is focusing um, i've got it on manual focus which gives me a wider um, field of focus but also um, 
it's probably not quite as sharp as it is sometimes an autofocus but autofocus just focuses in and out and uh, i find it a bit of a pain so hopefully this is a little bit more watchable than some of the focus issues on the uh, some of the earlier things i've done um, if you are new to the channel please do check out the other painting guides for americans if that interests you there's a bolt action one that's recently gone up as well there will be plenty more and um, there's lots of historical periods on the channel and there will be more in the future but uh, if you're into your american civil war there's loads of warlord games epic acw stuff on there at the moment um, there is some bolt action things um, and there's some more of the roses coming up as well and i like to do project vlogs for each of the the projects i do so you get to see my thoughts as i go along and build things i do unboxings but they tend to be for things that are to do with the channel and i'll also um, do painting tutorials as and when i have time because i do take the longest to film um but i will you know, i do like to try and share things when i can and especially when people asked i probably wouldn't have done one for the artillery i think i just considered it's so much like the uh, the infantry that no one would be interested but i did have a few requests so um thank you for those people who have requested things because it lets me know what you're looking for um, and i hope people find it interesting so thanks very much for watching and um, please like share and subscribe and all that stuff and I'll catch you soon.